Uh, just within the last couple of hours, bipartisan legislation was introduced in the Senate in response to China carrying and proposing for some controversial new measures as it relates to Hong Kong. President Trump this afternoon uh, declined to comment publicly so far on these measures, but this proposal in Congress would issue sanctions to businesses and individuals in China uh, should they cooperate with it. Uh, can you give us an update or any comment at all in response to what we're seeing with regards coming from Beijing to Hong Kong? Well, Kevin, thank you so much for having me back uh, on your program. Uh, it's deeply concerning uh, to the United States. Hong Kong is a great friend. Uh, to us, and we are monitoring this situation closely. So we're going to see it as, as it develops. Meanwhile, your team has just announced uh, within the last couple of days that $12 billion worth of investment uh, coming from the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, a $12 billion investment in the state of Arizona. What does this do uh, for Silicon Valley? What does this do for the semiconductor industry? Yes, and this was part of our uh, 5G uh, trifecta announcement that we made uh, on Friday. It's an absolute game changer. Not only is it uh, the biggest onshoring in uh, U.S. history, but it is critical to national security. TSMC plays a very critical role in terms of the semiconductor business, and they're going to be bringing their uh, entire supply chain with them. It bolsters American national security and our economic uh, prosperity. So with that, it, it will create thousands of American jobs um, and TSMC's uh, high high tech chips. It's a five nanometer plant. It's a state of the art. Uh, will will impact daily lives for uh, people around the world. And it will make Made in America once again. Uh, you know, Silicon Valley, the, the semiconductor was invented in the United States and it brings it back. And the deal also strengthens yeah. our relationship with Taiwan, a vibrant democracy, a force for good in the world, and a real good friend of the United States, just like Hong Kong. You know, you and I have talked about this before, Mr. Undersecretary, just about how the State Department is working in the longer term to try to develop international standards on a host of different sectors as it relates uh, to financial services, to energy, and to 5G. And it, it, this is just the latest illustration of that. But can you talk more broadly about the U.S. foreign policy goals in the long term in developing those international standards with Europe, with Taiwan, with Hong Kong? Yes, and this is this is part of uh, our economic prosperity network uh, initiative, and what that is, it's it's comprised of countries, like-minded countries, companies, civil society that operate under a set of trust principles, and those trust principles we would call in in the United States American values, uh, in Europe democratic values, but more translated globally, trust principles, and those are basic things like integrity, accountability, respect for rule of law, respect for sovereignty of nations, respect for property of all kinds, respect for the planet, respect for human rights, respect for the planet, uh, transparency, um, all of those things. And the Economic Prosperity Network uh, uh, encompasses all areas of economic collaboration, commerce, trade, investment, energy, digital, infrastructure, health care. Um, supply chain, uh, right. education, research. Well, I want to talk about those supply chains because as you, as you look at a $12 billion investment in Arizona as part of the Taiwan Agreement, uh, you, we, you talk also about diversifying and disentangling some of the U.S. interests from China. How important is that? I mean, and, and just the other day, and, and la or just the other day, literally, there was more bipartisan legislation coming from Congress that would require those Chinese companies that are traded publicly on U.S. exchanges to be able uh, to be subjected to the same type of regulations on the exchanges as other countries' firms and uh, as, as U.S. firms. Yes, and, and, and I think what you see in... Uh, in Congress is a reflection of what uh, citizens here in the U.S. Uh, are seeing, and actually citizens around the world. And I think people are waking up to the fact of the Communist Party's 
uh, three-pronged strategy of concealment, uh, co-option, and uh, co coercion. So the pandemic is a result of uh, concealment of the virus. Uh, co-option is uh, entanglement of the supply chains. And then you see with uh, China's so-called face mask diplomacy uh, is really uh, seduction and coercion in terms of, hey, we want you to do these things. You know, we'll aid you with the PPE. And countries are seeing that. Citizens are seeing that. And they don't like it. And what that is, is that's giving the political will uh, to government officials all over the world. And just two more questions for you. Just when you talk to leaders in Silicon Valley uh, about these issues, what do you hear from them? Well, uh, they, you know, I, I hosted Secretary Pompeo out in Silicon Valley for, for four days. We met with uh, many of the top leaders uh, out there. And, you know, one of the things that I said to him after spending 30 years in Silicon Valley and knowing all these guys is, uh, guys, we, we always just say corporate responsibility is social responsibility. Well, it's also global economic security because uh, just as the threat to democracy is real and urgent, so is the threat um, to your businesses because it seems like the battleground uh, between uh, democracy and a malign regime is the technological battlefield. And they know it because uh, they've had their intellectual property stolen. Uh, they've been coerced in terms of handing over proprietary technology. Um, so they feel it. And uh, uh, they're right along, uh, I think, with businesses all over the US and actually all over the world. And, and this is really a nonpartisan issue, it sounds like. By the way, it's a totally nonpartisan issue. I think it's the most unifying issue, uh, whether it's in Congress, Democrats or Republicans, uh, you can see it. And uh, you know, I, and I think everybody has woken up and said, look, we can't look at our, ro you know, look through lo rose colored glasses, as Secretary Pompeo would say. Um, we have to treat them not how we hope they would be, but how they are. And just one final question. A lot of reports about the inspector general. Has that impacted in any way your ability, sir, to conduct your to conduct your ability to do your job? None whatsoever.